Hello, this is Monica Reinagel, and you're listening to the Nutrition Diva podcast. This week, we're talking about mycoprotein. What is it? Where can you get it? And how does it compare with other sources of protein? Our show received support this week from Care Of, a company that's taking the guesswork out of vitamins. They send you personalized daily packs of vitamins based on your health goals, so you only take what you need, not the kitchen sink. The packs make it easy and convenient to remember to take your vitamins, especially when you're traveling. Go to takecareof.com now and get a personalized recommendation. And then use my code DIVA and you'll get 50% off your first order. And now let's get to today's topic. Becca writes, I'd love to hear your thoughts on mycoprotein. I've been using it as a chicken substitute, but I don't know much about it. Well, that makes two of us, Becca. So the prefix myco refers to things that are related to fungi, but mycoprotein is not made from mushrooms, as you might think. Rather, it's produced by a thread-like fungus that's found in the soil, and the official name is Fusarium venenatum. Mycoprotein is a relatively new thing. It was literally cooked up back in the 1980s or so by some British industrialists who were worried about a global food crisis. Specifically, they were worried that we would be unable to produce enough protein to sustain a growing population. By trial and error, they came up with a process in which the spores of this fungus are fermented in giant vats with glucose as a food source and various other nutrients. The resulting biomass that grows resembles a sort of fibrous dough that's high in protein, but also high in fiber. It also has a somewhat meat-like texture and a faint mushroomy smell and flavor. So where can you find this stuff? Well, mycoprotein is featured in a line of vegetarian meat substitutes that are sold under the brand name Quorn, and that's spelled Q-U-O-R-N. As far as I know, Corn products, which include things like fake chicken tenders and a ground beef substitute, are the only way that consumers can buy mycoprotein. It's not available as a protein powder, for example, or as a raw ingredient. The original corn products used small amounts of egg or milk protein to enhance the texture, and they also used some malted barley for the flavor, and that would make them inappropriate for vegans and also for those avoiding gluten. However, the company has now expanded its product line to include some vegan and gluten-free products as well. You just want to check the labels carefully. Now, a few years ago, the consumer watchdog organization Center for Science and the Public Interest expressed some concern about the safety of mycoprotein based on a handful of adverse reports. They petitioned the FDA to ban the ingredient or to label it as potentially hazardous, which the FDA ultimately declined to do. Now, you'd certainly want to avoid mycoprotein and products made from it if you have any sensitivity or allergy to mushrooms or fungi. Corn is also a pretty good source of fiber, and as with any fiber-rich food, eating a large amount of it, if you're not used to it, could give you gas or some other digestive issues. But mycoprotein has now been widely distributed in the UK and Europe for several decades, and more recently in North America, And it has a much lower rate of reported problems than foods containing soy, for example. Before we talk about how mycoprotein products stack up nutritionally to other sources of protein, a brief pause to thank our sponsor, Beachbody On Demand. Beachbody On Demand is an online fitness streaming service that gives you unlimited access to a huge variety of highly effective world-class workouts personalized to meet your needs. It gives you the ability to stream over 600 different workouts from programs that are proven to deliver amazing results, including Pyo, P90X, 21 Day Fix, and more, all from your web-enabled device. With step-by-step program guides, workout calendars, and the motivation and support of a growing community, Beachbody On Demand is the total package. I like doing yoga, but the yoga classes at my gym are all an hour long. On Beachbody On Demand, I found the perfect little 30-minute yoga session that I can do in the morning in my living room. And if I get bored with that, or I want something a little bit more extended or challenging, they've got so many other classes for me to try. This is a brand new service, but it already has over a million members. And now you can claim a free trial membership by texting DIVA to 
30, 30, 30. Get full access to this entire platform for free just by texting DIVA to 303030. So how does mycoprotein stack up nutritionally? Well, in terms of protein, a three ounce serving of mycoprotein based meat substitute contains a respectable 10 to 12 grams of protein. Now that's only about half as much as you'd get in a three ounce serving of chicken or beef, but it's a bit more than a similar sized serving of eggs or tofu. Most plant-based proteins provide significantly less protein per calorie than meat does. You'd have to eat 450 calories worth of black beans to get the same amount of protein as you'd get in just 175 calories worth of chicken, for example. But like tofu, mycoprotein does a pretty good job of delivering a decent amount of protein for relatively few calories. But when we're talking about plant-based proteins, we also need to think about the protein quality. Protein researcher Nancy Rodriguez has proposed that we think of protein sources not just in terms of the total amount of protein they provide, but also in terms of their essential amino acid density, or what percentage of your daily essential amino acid requirements a serving would provide. Mycoprotein does provide all of the essential amino acids in somewhat smaller amounts than you'd get from chicken or beef. A three ounce serving of mycoprotein gives you about a quarter of your daily requirement of essential amino acids, and that's about the same as a similar amount of scrambled eggs. That's only about half as much as you'd get from a serving of chicken or beef, but almost twice what you'd get from a serving of tofu. Mycoprotein is also a decent source of fiber with about five grams per serving, and the particular type of fiber in mycoprotein called beta-glucans, is of interest to cholesterol researchers because it appears to be particularly helpful in lowering cholesterol. In the show notes for today's show, which are at quickanddirtytips.com, I've included a little chart that shows you how two of the more popular corn products stack up to chicken, beef, eggs, and tofu in terms of the calories, the protein, the fiber, and the essential amino acids. I want to thank Becca for suggesting this week's topic. I have to admit, I really didn't know much about mycoprotein, so I was glad to have a reason to do some research. Here's my bottom line. If you enjoy the flavor and the texture of these meat substitutes, they look like a perfectly healthy option for adding good quality protein to your meatless meals. I do think there's a lot to be said, however, for getting your protein from a variety of sources, so be sure to keep mixing it up. If you have a question you think would make a good topic for an upcoming podcast, send me an email at nutrition at quickanddirtytips.com, or you can always post it on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page. And if you're a new listener to the podcast, I hope you'll subscribe to the show so that you're sure not to miss a single episode. This is Monica Reinagel, the Nutrition Diva. Thanks so much for listening and have a great week.